What's up, movie lover badasses? Fat Samurai Guy here with Lady Fat Blood, and today we're going to review Krampus. Here's a quick plot synopsis. A boy who has a bad Christmas ends up accidentally summoning a Christmas demon to his family's house. Now we're going to give you the good, we're going to give you the bad, we're going to give you the badass. First up, the good. I loved the opening credits to this movie. <laughs> we're not going to spoil it, we're not going to tell you what happens. Let's just say it's, uh, yeah, it's about right. Yeah, the intro was probably the best indicator of kind of what you were in for. It has the, uh, the Christmas demon lady Krampus uh, seal of approval. <laughs> uh, if you've ever worked retail, yeah. Yeah, it's about right. That's pretty much it. Pretty yeah. accurate. Yeah, and I know you kind of had an issue with the tone in some areas, and we'll get to that uh, from his perspective. My perspective, I was really struck by the movie was really confident in assuming you were going to understand what kind of a film it was. I felt the musical cues, the score in general, really gave the impression that we weren't supposed to take this all too seriously. Uh, this was brought to us by director Michael Daugherty, who brought us Trick or Treat, which I was really excited because I thought we were going to get a rated R Christmas movie, a little Christmas horror film. And unfortunately, we ended up getting a PG-13, but uh, I've heard, I heard somebody describe this as gory. I don't know what the hell movie they were watching. This movie is not gory at all. This is like, this is, this is a deserved PG-13, and I don't really think gore was necessary. So while I would have preferred kind of a more twisted, gory Christmas horror film, I think what they ended up settling on was a really good mix. It's it's kind of good if you have a little bit of a twisted sense of humor. I thought it was an unapologetic fantasy film, which was really nice, especially by the end. I was a little nervous by the end, and then the end kind of picked itself up. I'm like, it's total fantasy. So yeah, we wanted more of a horror film, but I think what they gave us, it was pretty enjoyable. And the acting in the film was very solid. Also, I enjoyed the two dads, um, Adam Scott and, uh, David Kochner. Uh, David, uh, <laughs> he really reminded me of a Randy Quaid type of character from A Christmas Vacation. Yeah, all the actors did a really good job. Even the kids. Uh, you know, kid acting, it's usually shit. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of get, you just take it. And I felt, I felt everybody in the film, they they got it, and even the kid acting was, was pretty good I mean, for what it was. So the characters, they were exactly what they needed to be. Not not really a whole lot of likable people in this movie, but we weren't really supposed to get yeah, it. That was kind that of... That's kind of the point, right? Yeah, so everybody played their respective parts very well. They were exactly what they needed to be, so that was nice. Now for the bad. So like she was saying earlier, uh, the movie didn't really need to be gory, but... I would have preferred lots of gore. <laughs> kind of wanted it because, you know, Trick or Treat, which I consider uh, one of the best, uh, probably one of the best horror anthology uh, films was rated R. And very underrated movie, by the way. Check out Trick or Treat. But, uh, you know, that was the director I kind of was expecting to be, <laughs> you know, for this film. But it's fine. It's fine. But it may turn off uh, some people that are expecting gore. Yeah, definitely. This is... This is by no means the, the horror film that some people are making it out to be. Horror, slight, fantasy, yes. Um, and and some of the, one of the main pet peeves that I had was 
this movie had shades of Evil Dead 2 going for it. And yeah. I was, we were both kind of like getting really excited with some of the scenes there. There is a scene involving a character in the kitchen with gingerbread men. And that is all I will say. <laughs> and there were, there were some moments in there where I was like, oh, yes, yes, bring me more, bring me more. And I wanted it to go further. Yes. I felt because the movie, again, even the, even the music led you to kind of understand what this movie was going for, the sense of humor, the tone and everything. I wanted this to go hell's a poppin'. Yeah. And go all the way. Yes. And, and we go only, insane. Yes. We only ended up getting maybe bits. 60% of what we wanted, yeah. it could have kept going, and I would have been a very happy person. I would have been screaming the praises up on the mountaintop, saying, go see this movie, go pay full price. Yeah. But it, it just stopped short if it had just gone a little more crazy. Yeah, mm, it's it kind of like, nice. it's kind of like, uh, we either wanted it to go full-on super scary mode, <laughs> or just hell's a poppin' super evil dead 2 mode in terms of comedy. So the score was very well done, but that's kind of where, beginning, beginning of the movie, I was having problems with the tone, for me, for me, not so much her, but for me, I was kind of having issues with, because when they set up the whole family aspect, it was perfect, it was genius, because the score was like, you know, a typical goofy Christmas comedy type score, you know, <laughs> You know, and I was like, okay, I see what they're doing. You know, before the shit hits the fan, I see what they're doing, right? And then when you finally see a shot of Krampus on top of the rooftop, it's freaky looking, man. It is really freaky looking. And the scene that transpires right after when you first see Krampus, I had to sit up, man. I was like, oh, this this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome, right? I mean, there was no comedy in that scene. That scene was like, holy shit, all right? Oh, like man, I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen, but I don't want to fuck with that guy. But then right after that, Krampus lands and walks around a vehicle, and you see uh, his hooves walking around from the perspective of one of the characters underneath the vehicle, and it's freaky before that when you see it. And it's freaky during the scene, but when you see his hooves walking around the vehicle, the music went back to... And I was in the theater like... Uh... <laughs> like, what happened? What happened? I mean, that was not a moment where slapstick music needed to be inserted. That was fucking badass, that whole scene leading up to that. And then we're just like... <laughs> Another issue I had with the film was the first 15 to 20 minutes, I was giving the movie, again, a lot of respect for respecting the film watcher in assuming that we understood exactly the tone and the type of film we were getting. They weren't pandering, they weren't... Uh, they weren't trying to talk down to us, and I was like, okay, we're really, okay, wow, we're already seeing Krampus here. The movie is actually starting to get going here. Cool, we're jumping right in. And a couple of times, because they don't do it at the beginning of the film, well, they kind of do, but they do some more later, the movie grinds to a halt for the sake of further character development. They wanted to show the family being the despicable, really irritating family and the suffering family that puts up with the despicable family. And then they really stop the film midway so that you can kind of sympathize with everybody a little bit more to show that everybody is making better effort to get along with each other and that they're all coming together under these really crap circumstances, which I understand. Yeah, it's fine, but... And at, 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 the, at the end of the day, I feel like this is one of those movies where there was more effort involved than there needed to be, which I will never flaw a film for trying to give me character development and put forth an effort into making me care about the characters. I will always give a film marks for at least making the attempt to do such a thing. But it did grind the film to a halt a couple of times. It got and slow. So it did get slow. Uh, just a small handful of times I had to, I've done something I have never done before. I had to run to the lobby and grab a full throttle 
I had to go get caffeine. Now, granted, I was tired, so you know you could take that for what it is. But during one of the slow scenes, I made a dash for it, and I came right back, and nothing had happened. So it, you know, it only warning, took, just for, it only for took warning. But it's but it's not. You think at first it's going to be nonstop. Once it finally picks up. That's not the case. Yeah, so it slows down. As long as you realize that they will stop, they will movie will break for character development. Hey, at least they they tried. And now for the badass. So even though tonally I was having issues with the movie, she was having some issues with the movie kind of being a little slow at some parts. <laughs> thankfully, though, later in the film the movie does pick up, and finally. The tonal problems went away because when shit went down in this movie later, I was like, yeah. there you go. I was like, yes, the movie has found itself. This is the movie we wanted to see. Yes. The lady demon Krampus <laughs> has come from on high to praise thee at Weta Works for giving us practical effects. What? Practical effects, and guess what? I would have to say that the practical effects to CGI effects was right about there. Mm -hmm. We actually had more practical effects than CGI. Now, does Krampus look a little funny? He looks awesome, though. A little bit. He looks awesome, but does his mouth not move? <laughs> was that a choice? Stylistically, I am going to say yes. I was so thrilled to see so many practical effects. And what I really liked about Krampus is that they 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 set him up. They set him up that he is that he is uh, Santa Claus's shadow self. Now we've seen other versions of Krampus where he looks kind of like uh, you know a goat man something. Like in the Christmas horror story, he looked like an animal. Well, he looks like goat hooved evil Santa in this, which I thought was a really interesting choice. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed uh, I, anything that was practical. I was like, this is this is so this is you know I love this. And they used the CGI when they needed to, when mm -hmm. it was necessary. Yeah, I was getting a little bit of a Jim Henson Dark Crystal vibe there. I mean, yeah. that was pretty cool. A little bit of Labyrinth there. Bottom line, could we have given it a rental? Yeah. Did we need to pay the full price? No. Is it worth a matinee if you've got nothing better to do and there's nothing else? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think you get the right crowd in here and you know what you're in for. I think you'll enjoy it. It's definitely not for everybody, but what movie is. Uh, Really good amount of humor. I wanted a little bit more. I wanted a little more hells a popping, but a little bit more scares. Yeah, I was I was grateful for what we got. I liked the sincerity of the filmmakers. Uh, I liked that the actors weren't phoning it in. You know, they all came to play. They all hit their marks. I ended up really enjoying the end. I like a good horror fantasy. I just would have liked a little bit more horror, but that's that's my taste. Not everybody wants to see a bloodbath for a Christmas <laughs> film. <laughs> We're twisted individuals. <laughs> so, overall, I I recommend it. Mm -hmm. So we give Krampus 3.6 out of 5 chainsaws. So, that's it for today on our review of Krampus. <laughs> Let us know if you've seen Krampus. Let us know in the comments below what you thought of the movie. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time. Bah humbug!